Welcome everybody, this is the second video in my psychology board review series. The first video is kind of a roadmap or an explanation of how these videos are going to be working. But let's start off by talking about substances. Why are substances going to be covered on boards? Well, let's go through a scenario. You have a 40 year old man, he comes in uh, agitated, he's diaphoretic, he's uh, shaking, hasn't eaten, hasn't slept in days. Um, the, his friends are worried about him, what's going on? What is the following drug that he's most likely intoxicated on? And they'll give you five options and you have to choose the best one. So that's a very straightforward substance question that you may encounter on the boards. Now, there are some um, more high yield subjects that we're gonna be talking about. We'll be covering multiple drugs, but I only wanna hit on the major points on each of these drugs. I'm not here to go into every minute, tiny detail. I'm here to get you maximum points on test day and to really give you the skills on your wards to, uh, to look very competent about all these different topics. So let's start off with substances. Let's talk about alcohol. That'll be a major topic uh, on test day because it's so prevalent in the community. We'll also talk about benzodiazepines. So benzos, we'll cover cocaine. We'll cover, uh, you know, amphetamines. We'll probably lump those together. Um, cocaine and amphetamines such as methamphetamine um, produce pretty similar, uh, pretty similar side effects. I do recognize that there are differences between the drugs, but for the most part, we'll be talking about the stimulants together, so the amphetamines and the cocaine um, topics together. We'll also cover hallucinogens. These will include LSD and shrooms. Um, let's also cover opioids. So heroin, that's a big one. Um, most likely we'll see a certain buzzword or question on test day. I'm not going to surprise you with it now. This is just a general overview of the different substances and uh, we'll talk about that in a future video. Opioids, so heroin. We'll also talk about PCP or angel dust. We'll then probably end with marijuana. So very common drugs, you'll see these in real life. More realistically, you'll see them in boards and test questions. So what am I talking about substances? Well, we've got this thing called substance abuse versus substance dependence. They'll give you a scenario, they'll list off some traits. They want to know, is this patient abusing a substance or are they dependent on that substance? Now, I, I have numbers here because there's four main points for substance abuse that I want to cover. And then also we'll be talking about substance dependence and how to kind of differentiate between the two. But for substance abuse, all you really need for a diagnosis is one of the following over the course of one year. So you just need one of these four traits. So let's cover what I'm even talking about. Well, for one, you need to be in legal trouble. So let's say you were uh, cited for public intoxication. Well, you know, you might be abusing that substance, whether it's alcohol, cocaine, marijuana, whatever it is, if you get in legal trouble because of that substance, it is classified as substance abuse. So legal trouble is one. Also, um, danger, for example. If you drive with a friend and that friend is driving drunk, it puts you in danger, in, in uh, you know, potential bodily harm situation. So drinking and driving is a substance abuse. Um, if it decreases functioning in your life or it interferes with your daily responsibilities. So interferes with responsibilities. All right. And then lastly, you know that this drug is not good for you. You know it's caused you physical harm, it's caused you mental damage, but you continue to use it. So continued use despite knowing all the consequences and all the troubles that it's causing you. So any of these four points um, would qualify as substance abuse. Now, how do we differentiate that between substance dependence? Well, notice how abuse doesn't sound so bad. Yeah, you get in legal trouble because you smoked weed. You are abusing marijuana, 
but you're not dependent on it per se. Dependence is going to require three of the following over the course of one year. So that's going to be one diagnostic uh, differentiation is one of these will classify as abuse and three of these minimum to classify as dependence. So what am I talking about? Well, let's say you drank alcohol for 30 years and all of a sudden you decide to stop. What are you going to get? You're going to get withdrawal symptoms. So if you experience withdrawal symptoms after the discontinuation of using a product or a substance, that would classify as substance dependence. Number two, if you have the desire to decrease your intake of alcohol or cocaine or whatever substance it is, if you have the desire or you recognize the need that you need to cut back, that may be an indication that you are dependent on that subject. Also, tolerance. Now, what do I mean by tolerance? Well, let's say you smoke a bowl at night, it helps you relax, but you know, you continue that pattern of a bowl a night, a bowl a night, and eventually that bowl doesn't actually get you um, as relaxed as it did in the past. So a year later, you may need two bowls. You increased your tolerance to the substance. That's, that's an indication of substance dependence. Also, decreased functioning. So let's say for alcohol, for example, if you have decreased functioning, um, you're not able to go to work, you're unable to meet your responsibilities in life, kind of like abuse as well. Next, if you spend more time with the substance, uh, the C with a little line over it is just shorthand for with. So if you spend more time with the substance, I'm talking getting the substance. So if you're obsessed more having to drive further to get the substance, if you're spending more time smoking or ingesting the substance, and then more time recovering from the side effects, the acute intoxication of the actual substance. So if you're spending more time with the substance. Um, also, if you're using the substance for longer than uh, you intended. If you're using a larger amount of substance than you actually meant to, so let's say you meant to only drink two beers on Saturday night, and instead you decided that you really were gonna drink six or seven, and you look back and you're like, ooh, that's more than I intended. Or, let's say, oh yeah, I'm only gonna smoke one bowl, you know, spend 45 minutes high, and then, and then uh, go to work the next day. Well, if you actually spent two hours, three hours, four hours getting high, well that can uh, indicate a longer substance use. And then lastly, um, kind of like number four over here, continued use, despite knowing that it causes physical problems, mental problems, etc. So continuing the use, even though you know it's maladaptive for you, you know it's causing you physical or mental harm. So that's really the main difference between substance abuse and substance dependence, you really do need to know this, uh, the difference, difference for test day. You're going to get a question that says, are they abusing this drug or are they dependent on the drug? Remember three and one, um, you need at least one of these to be considered abuse, and then at least three of the, the seven criteria here to be 